Many pro triathletes started life as elite runners. They then discovered cycling as a bit of cross training and sort of fell into a whole new sport. Yeah, well, we're not here to try and make you triathletes, but we are here to explain why cycling can make you a better runner. Cross training has been used in decades in running programs to help develop strength and fitness without actually running. Cross training can come in many forms, but it's cycling we're focusing on today. It comes as no surprise that one of the main benefits of cycling is the fitness that it brings. Yeah, I think you'd all agree that pro cyclists are incredibly fit. They have huge aerobic engines from the amount of hours they spend in the saddle. And well, runners don't need to run as much as cyclists need to cycle when it comes to the overall hours per week. However, if you do include some cycling into your overall training program as a runner, you can sort of up that capacity for your fitness. Cycling uses your large leg muscles, your quads and your glutes and your calves and obviously working those is going to work your heart and your lungs which is going to build your aerobic engine. You can of course also strain your anaerobic engine by doing hill sprints and sprints on the bike to build that capacity in your running. Of course speaking of hills they're also going to build your strength and all of these things together are going to build your muscular endurance. Yeah but you might be listening just going so what? We are runners and we don't want to cycle more. Why can't we just run more? Well, I expect deep down you know the answer to that because there is that fine line with running more and getting fitter or running more and getting injured. Yes, sadly, the majority of running injuries come about from increasing that mileage because you are then just increasing the force, that downward force that you get in a repetitive motion of running. You can add cycling to your running program or even replace some of your runs with cycles. If you're finding that your body can handle an additional training load but no more impact from running, you can add some cycles to your program and you can increase your overall training load without adding any more running. Also, if you're finding that you're struggling to keep those niggles at bay or an injury is creeping in, you can keep your fitness by adding in some cycles or replacing some of your runs with cycles without adding any more impact and letting your body handle that niggle. Well, hopefully you have discovered cycling as the complement to running before a point of injury, but if you have got injured, like we've pointed on earlier, it is a great way to help maintain that fitness. And we mentioned so many triathletes have stumbled into the sport because they found cycling, used it for that, and then, well, they're pretty much doing triathlon, aren't they? But it does also have that benefit that if you are injured and you can't run at all, that you're keeping some element of fitness, but also you're helping with that mental frustration. Okay, up until now, we've spoken in quite general terms as to how cycling can help your running, but it's time to take a closer look at just what points actually cross over. Yeah, starting with your core. Cycling is a unilateral movement, as in it's one leg and then the other leg and then the other leg, which is a continuous motion, much like running, but it does mean that you have to activate your core to keep that crossover from left to right. This diagonal sling movement is very similar to running, and it's left shoulder, right hip, right shoulder, left hip. I think I did those wrong, but you know what I mean, left and right. I just don't know my left and my right. Either way, it does require you to activate your core, and that's important. Obviously, cyclists are pretty much known for having small upper bodies, but there's significant core activation in your cycling. Yeah, and then you've got, if you cycle with cycle shoes and cleats, you've got a crossover with the pullback of your pedal stroke. So once you get to the bottom and you start to just pull your foot back, it's actually very similar to that stance phase of the running gait, but instead of your foot actually moving on the ground, you're pulling your body over the top of your foot. So it's replicating that movement. And if you are a midfoot striker and you have your cleats in the middle of your feet, where most people do, there's even more of a similarity there. Your cadence can also correlate between your cycling and running. If you're working on increasing your run cadence, you could start by increasing it on the bike, getting used to that higher cadence, that higher turnover, and then translate it 
to the run. You could even experiment with some brick sessions where you ride a short ride at a really high cadence, and then when you get off, you try and replicate that cadence on the run. And we've touched on core already, especially if you're riding with nice light hands on the handlebars, you're gonna be having to work your trunk. But if you're standing out of the saddle, probably even more so. And also your calves will be working there as you're transferring that weight from side to side. And there's also an element of when you get to the back part of the pedal stroke and you're pulling back and up, that you'll be activating some of those muscles at the front of your shin, which also come into importance when it comes to your running. Yeah, your position when you're riding has a big impact on how much your cycling is going to affect your running. For example, standing out of the saddle much closer replicates your running stride. It opens up those hips and is closer to a running position. Obviously, cyclists always want to be as aero as possible, but being down in an aero tuck with your hips closed is not gonna replicate your running as much. So think about that when you're out biking, because standing out of the saddle and working those bigger muscle groups closer to a running stride is gonna make more difference to your running down the road. Well, I reckon we've convinced you that you need to go out for a cycle to help your running, but before you do, let's take a quick look at the how and when to incorporate cycling into your running program. If you're looking to increase your total weekly volume, then obviously adding a cycle on top of your running is the way to do it. But if you're looking for additional recovery, then of course you need to look at replacing those sessions. A good place to start is replacing your recovery run with a recovery cycle. Obviously you want to keep this nice and easy, easy gear, higher cadence. The idea is to get your circulation going and help flush all those toxins out of your run, running legs. You could start by swapping a, say, 40 minute recovery run with a 60 minute recovery ride. You can go a little bit longer on your cycling than you do with your running because it's low impact. If you are new to using cycling in this way or to cycling generally, make sure you start off by keeping it really easy and nice and short. And if you want it to be really controlled, you can look to just do an indoor cycle. But if you do venture outside, make sure you plan your route. So if it's a recovery ride, for example, you don't want to be doing anything that's really hilly because that's going to kind of defeat the object. So the idea is to just be nice and relaxed, especially with your upper body in your hands. However, if you want to be using it for one of those other crossover points that we've talked about, then you could devise more of a session plan around it. So for example, you could go and do some hill reps. And if you are, don't be afraid to really drop down your cadence and work on that single leg strength. It's almost like a single leg squat, which is something that's really useful for runners. At the other end of the spectrum, you could do some really short, sharp bursts, say 30 second efforts, which are gonna get your cardiovascular system working really hard. And one of the great things about cycling, the recovery, you can still be moving quite fast. It's not like running where if you run really hard, you're then gonna to have to walk to recover from it. If you weren't already a triathlete before you started watching this video, perhaps we've got you thinking about doing a duathlon. Well, jokes aside, we do hope that this video has given you some idea of how, if you are a runner, you could use cycling to improve your running. If it has helped you, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the GTN channel for more videos about all things running and triathlon. And cycling.